This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Peachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a sunny, wonderful day out there today. And now I hate myself as a podcast because I'm talking about the weather because it's a podcast and you guys will be checking it out later for the most part. But anyway, he's Gadget Guru. Uh, no, I'm not the Gadget Guru. I'm the video guy here in uh, up on top of the hill. With us is the Gadget Guru from D-Town. Is that the right D-Town? D-Town? Big, 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 big Dormont. The Big D-Mont. Um, <laughs> Studio C. Chilla, Gadget Guru with uh, Big Bank International Esquire joining us now from also Sun in Your Face, uh, Dormont Studio. Yeah. I, I, I think I have like the same horizon line that you do. I think we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's just that time of the year. Hey, we're past the summer solstice. That means the sun will start going away again. Yeah. <laughs> not for not for many, many months, though. For many, many gotta, months. But, I mean, I it's starting. That. The process is starting. Oh, you're ducking the sun over there. Not that any of you guys know on where's, the audio. Where's my chair lever? Your chair. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, but anyways, as he adjusts his camera over there, we do have also with us, he's joining us from Mville. Mville. Mville? Mville. Marysville, Monroeville. 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 Zombieland. Yeah. Uh, Monroeville. Yes. It's Riz of Hi, Riz Sword. Plays Games and the Wrestling Hi. Mayhem Show. Yes. Riz yes. Plays Games on Twitch. Um yeah, the reason why I'm not there in studio is because I do not want to melt out there today. Mm, no, no, no. It'll be very sunny it on the is, couch it over is there. It's very sticky, very like sway, very, very, very. I don't think you want me there. So. No, no, probably not. Smelly Riz. Smelly Riz is smelly. Uh, sticky Riz is smelly. Uh, but so <laughs> I'm staying in the cold AC. Hopefully, hopefully, a lot of people in Pittsburgh are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, let's get this Stay thing safe. Rolling, Stay safe. Stay safe. Check, check on the elderly and your pets, please. And also check out Riz Plays Games on Twitch. Yes, right. From your AC. (laughs) 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 Oh, clever. But anyways, this is your awesome cast. You can check us out on awesomecast.com. Hit us up, email at uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesomecast on the Twitter. Facebook page and group. A lot of great conversation at the the Awesomecast uh, Facebook group where uh, where a lot of the stories that we have from uh, today's show are from this past week. Things that you guys have shared, things that we have shared. I use it as a personal bookmarker of things I want to talk about on the show and see if you guys have any comments on it in the meantime. And of course, you can subscribe and rate us wherever you do find us on the YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Speaker, Google Podcasts. And of course, we're live every Tuesday on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. And a shout out to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. You hear that music maybe in our, ma- our Awesome Cast Gold or uh, before the show here on the live stream. Uh, but they uh, do carry a replay of this show every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern time and of course uh, once a month we go over there for an awesome thing of the month I believe I'm going to be there this Sunday on River Talk Radio at 7 p.m. Uh, that's going to be on the River Talk Facebook page and then replaying. I believe the next morning he replays that on Rivers Edge PGH.com and podcast form. You can look that up too. And also uh, our other streaming partner on the West Coast, the 405media.com. So funny that I started this as a flyover state podcast because uh, I was tired of hearing the opinions of tech people in California and they completely carry us in California. Uh, thank you to them. You can check us out. We are daily weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. If you want to catch up on the latest of the awesome cast. Um, Yeah, we'll see Alex. Notice there was a different order to how we've been saying subscribe. Um, I think Missy did this to to engineer me to do this appropriately. So I'm just not in that default mode I've been doing for the last five years. Uh, So uh, we're we're bringing it back around. 
Uh, hey, if you want to catch the live show, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to join us in here, uh, please hit up awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. We do invite guests to view the show, hopefully when it's a little less sunny. Uh, but just hit us up so we can put a chair out for you and such and uh, make sure we have enough sponsor pizza for you as well. If you want to advertise with the show, please uh, hit us up also at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com for more details. Uh, that's uh, producer Missy will be handling you there. And, of course, thanks to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Um, maybe uh, you can help us uh, uh, get a pair of iPod socks. And you'd know what we're talking about if you're on the live stream or if you're getting the Awesome Cast Gold, uh, thanks to being a Coffee Club $5 member, just like John Diggy DeGore and Mount Mullard. And of course, a uh, fan of the show, $1 level, our uh, contributor, longtime contributor as well, Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Thank you so much for you guys supporting the show, helping keep the lights on here, which I realize I didn't even turn on this evening uh, <laughs> because it's so bright in here. Uh, but, anyways, uh, thanks to them. Uh, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast, uh, where uh, you you can contribute to the show, get some goodies from us uh, as well. Some intellectual goodies, not physical goodies yet for the Awesome Cast. We're working on that. We're, we're having some fun with some of the other Patreons, and we're looking to see what we can do for you guys as well. So let's get into our awesome thing of the week, and I want to start with Chilla's Kindle Paperweight. So, so before we get to the paperweight, I'm going to be going paper on weight? vacation. Yes. The paperweight. Yes. Before we get to the paperweight, I'm going to be going on vacation here in almost the middle of August. So usually at about this time of year, I start updating or handling some tech decisions that impact my vacation experience. Mm. And one of the things that I like to do on vacation is read. Um, my wife, Carla, likes to read even way more than I do. Um, but there's a probably a list of about four to five books that I want to get through on vacation, um, primarily for work, all text heavily, heavily text-based. And reading at the beach on any kind of shiny screen does not work well. And the fear of of scratching the screen or getting even the littlest bit of water on the device, et cetera, um, makes me nervous. So one of the things that I invested in this year is the Amazon paper white, oh, not the paper white. look at that. Um, look at that. And you can see, uh, that much nice. like I do with any, any kind of device, it's actually updating right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can see that the screen, the tech, I can't, I don't know if you can make up. It's really viewable. Like, like yeah. I'm reading that very easily through your, <laughs> through your webcam. Yeah. That's what you get for 4Ks. Um, 4Ks of video. I am so scrunching <laughs> that down so bad to 720 for the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wanted something that we could read at the, at the, um, at the pool, at the beach. Um, there's only one small USB charging port on the bottom. Um, it gets what they claim as weeks of battery power, hmm. obviously with a with plain text, and it, it does have it can handle some some minor graphics. I would say it would be like reading a newspaper from like nineteen eighty seven, um, <clears throat> with the way that kind of it, it definitely does a decent job at displaying graphics. Obviously, only in black and white, um, but it was it was definitely an investment that I wanted to make. Um, as we go to the beach to be able to read. So I'm really looking forward that there it includes Wi-Fi. Um, I can't remember. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the retail price on them is one nineteen ninety nine. Amazon's constantly running deals on them. Um, the other thing that this gives me too, that I've never had access to is the Kindle, um, that, that extended free library where there's a number of books in there to, where you get free, free reads. So I'm also looking and looking forward to using that. The resolution displays the 300 pixels per inch. Um, and like I said, you get the the massive Prime members read free with un, unlimited access to over a thousand titles. So, so I think I the only drawback cool. from this is you can't really participate in the comic book reading. That, that does come with that. That is probably true. Or it's going to be, <laughs> if it reboots here soon with the, after the update, I should have thought better of myself as to running the update. Um I, I don't know. It would be in black and white. It would probably look like reading the, the comics mm -hmm. on a newspaper. But okay. um, 
yeah. The, the other thing that I, I did like is that the, it has Wi-Fi, so no matter where I go, I can get my stuff um, synced to it without having to worry about tethering to another device. And I actually have a number of uh, books that I already had in Mobi format and in PDF format, and you can sync those right to the device. Um, so I was looking forward to being able to not just use the Kindle library, but a number of other popular formats. That's awesome. And that's, uh, let's say, it starts, it looks like about $120 for these ones. And, and you picked up two. Yeah, I did. I picked up, I picked up one for me. And then here's the, uh, the other one, uh, one for Carla. So there you go. They're so, they're so small. Like they're like, they're, yeah, they're, they I look will like, say like it's, it's super light. And I would say it has like a six, maybe. Well, here, let me. So if you have this device, here is the, seven inch the nexus 7 android device next oh, to geez. it okay um, and you can see your reflection um hey it's me so yeah, it's you ha. um so so yeah the, and obviously you can see the difference in the screen right you're getting a direct reflection back at you and this device has a nice nice look to it so that was the the primary reason for the purchase. Uh, we could do our two heads uh, two head display now. When you just like hold that up to your screen, <laughs> and that's our new like interview mode, right? There you, so, picture in picture. There in you picture. go. Awesome. <laughs> so go check that out. Of course, on the Amazon. Riz, something yes. major happened in Fortnite. I haven't played uh, for a little oh, bit sorry. now. Oh sorry. man, what the heck happened to Fortnite? Sorg, did you watch the entire video? I did not watch the video. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So I want you to do is, something for me. Is there a point I need to skip to? Go to 344. 344, like start so, at 344? Yeah, start it at 344. All right. Um, so don't start it yet, though. I'm going to talk about this for a minute. Okay, let me know. Um, Cue me up. So the Fortnite, uh, there's a, there was a big one-time event that happened on Fortnite, uh, which is a video game that's kind of – that's a, a catch-all – it's a massive. First, it's a massive video game that shooter. Chilla is now addicted to. Yes, everybody's addicted to it. Um, so this one thing they have is the, the the one big thing that they have now is a rocket that went into space. Quote unquote rocket that went into quote unquote space, um, and there was it was one time only, and during that time there was a there was a couple people who had a watch party. Let's just say. 48 people. Um, Sorg, you can play that video now. All right, I'm going to go to the video um, here. We're playing it. Um, so there yeah. was a there was a nice little watch party on a on a on a tower that was built. Yeah, somebody built a tower overlooking a lot of the map and mm -hmm. just like people hanging out there. One had, one has there's yeah. all about popcorn. You can get popcorn in this game apparently. Yeah, yeah you can have popcorn. There were dance. There was a dance party. Uh -huh. uh, somebody had a like a rocket ship emoji that that like you can float around in like a. You're riding a bull. And um, you know how I know there was 48 people in that thing? <laughs> how is that? Um, oh, you see the rocket. Yeah. Yeah. In the you can see the rocket coming up. Yeah. And then there, there was all these space-time continuum things happening after yeah. it went up into space. Okay. And then everybody fell. Everybody fell. Everybody is fell. This, is this about to happen here? It's about to happen. Hold on. The rocket's still going up. The rocket's still yep. going up. Yep. Yep. Now, now, it'll probably be around the. Uh, you can probably see lasers coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, wait. Oh, wait. Somebody got hit with something. Mm -hmm. Hold on. The rocket's still going. Mm -hmm. This is great so for the audio. Still going. So the rocket is going up in the air uh, from the Fortnite going, map. Still you know, going we're, up we're in the We're still air. we're still looking at this. There's a little glimmer there's, in the sky, maybe. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there now there's like in Fortnite. If you go to Fortnite now. There are these little time things coming out of okay. places. I'm not sure right, what's going on. We see the lasers. Or... We see the but lasers. You see the lasers. You see the you see the time thing. Was, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, somebody didn't really like this party too much. Okay. They wanted the win, Sorg. Okay. Oh they no! They wanted to win. They blew up the tower, and forty-eight people fell to their deaths. Yes. 48 people, which is now the record for people, like, for for one shot. For solo kills. It was for 48 solo kills. Wow. In one shot. 
And wow. the the current the, the previous record was only thirty three. So not so, the fact uh, that there was a rocket, not the fact of anything like there's a big watch. Well, you, you know, you, you no, could say no, there was a big watch party, but yeah. also that somebody used this to just kill 48 win. people in a game. They wanted the wins, or <laughs> they, they, won they wanted that winner, winner, winner chicken dinner. Holy crap. Holy crap. This is what you get with me, Sword. <laughs> this is why I'm here, isn't it? <laughs> that and other things like, that we'll get to later in the show. Yes. Uh, and iPods. And the th- learn you about some iPods stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so my awesome thing of the week and this is something that i've been checking out for a while but i didn't realize like i didn't think to look at it, it was it came up on uh one of the podcasts i was listening to one of the tech ones and i, I always enjoy the timeline feature because i always like the old google latitude and even like you know something like uh, um um a uh, swarm that would tell me where I checked into, but now like you know something like latitude did it by itself and now google maps just kind of does it with timeline but I didn't realize that there was a web desktop interface for it. Like there's whatever you saw on your phone, you can go day by day and the pictures you 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 take attach if they're geotagged with the locations you've been. Really fun with all the traveling I've been doing in the last couple of months and years even. So I, I went and checked out the um the timeline thing. And and the idea that I have I have a map of the world where it tells me basically every place that I've stepped foot. In the last, um, I don't know, got to be at least three years uh, from the looks of things. Actually, four years probably now I'm looking at some locations. So basically, since I started traveling, here's everything that I've been to. Uh, It's got my spots in Thailand. It's got when I changed planes in China that one time. Um, But it's really fun to even look at just the United States and see uh, everywhere I've had a chance to travel to. So, so. It, and also, this is a feature I, I've used this in other ways when, um, especially when we're doing expenses. And I've been asked uh, by, by by producer Missy, "Hey, why why did you why did we pay a toll in the Ohio Turnpike on this date?" And I can go back and say, "Oh, hey, yeah, we went up to Cleveland and we we were filming that one event." Um, so, also probably great for alibis. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it. it I like maps. I like visualizations. I like, you know, I love an Instagram where you can see everywhere you've taken an Instagram, for instance. Um, so uh, this is just my map geekery kind of going crazy for something like this. And, and when you go in here, it, it also shows you, um, you can go in and, 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 you know, get more like trip information, how many places, how many stats you have. Um, so like that, that kind of like sticks out a little bit more. I can go to like, for instance, here's one from, uh, but here's one from, uh, January and February, like Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, you can pull it up and you can see the whole trip like day by day with all the images. Like here's something where I'm here at Sorgatron media and here's whatever, uh, we were filming with fishing without bait that day. So just a, another interesting way to look at all that data. Uh, Chill. have you played with this any? I have not played with this, but one of the questions I wanted to ask, can you share this with someone else? Um, I don't know. Like, I'd be interested, like, hey, I want to share, like, with Christopher when I'm well gone. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, here's here's every everywhere I've gone and everything I've done kind of thing I, I think it would be i think it would be really interesting or you may be able to say hey, i know you can create the, the google kind of creates the memories or whatever for you where you can kind of creates a video of where you were last weekend that's that's cool but i wonder if there's a way to share this it's yeah. almost it's almost like going back through your entire facebook timeline yeah it is it's kind of um you know it, yeah i wish i had something like that because how many times have i been around pittsburgh and and i remember a place right and then, like, after years and years of maybe going to a place and realize that, like, what I remember as a child is this place over here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or maybe getting those wrong for so many years until my mom tells me different. And, and I was like, oh, that was this place up here, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that, that, would be, that would be really cool to even revisit something, like, to know this is the spot you were at five years old that you, for some reason, remember. And you can go revisit that spot, right? Yeah. So, um no, I, I'm not seeing any kind of shareable um, shareable mechanism on this from poking around at it so far. Maybe, so. maybe if Google's listening. Hey, Google. Hey, hey Google. <laughs> please help you, us share our, our our intimate data with other people. You've just you've just set off a thousand Google Homes. Yo, Google. 
<laughs> I wonder if mine uh, popped up over there. I've been yelling at it, at it all day. So, anyways, thank you guys for your. And you just told it to share all of your data with the world. Hey, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Dave says I found with the timeline I'm boring. Work to home in Monroeville. <laughs> Yeah. The, the fun part for me is when I go Ubering and, and lifting. So it's like that weird pattern, you know, all over the city and wherever I ended up for a night. It just looks like I've been just driving drunk all over the place. Uh, but really, I was just driving drunks all over the place. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, that's a lot of fun there. Uh, so from that, hey, you know what else is fun? You know what I got a line today from on my timeline? Going from the studio up to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Supported pit 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 pit. <clears throat> wow. Take two. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time, several years now. Thank you to our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Oh, look at that stuff on the front page. It's delicious. Um, but they're, of course, here in Beachview, the OG, as well as Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Thank you so much for them for supporting the show with pizza things, feeding the people that come into the studio guys uh and on this you know lunch hour of the awesome cast and thank you guys at home for supporting the show and uh, go hit them up pj's underscore slice on the twitter or if you're here in town and uh let them know that the awesome cast sent you okay so from that we do have a couple of user submissions here first of all i'm excited by this uh brian from brian crawford of the river talk and river's edge network um, this, I, geez, we're going to have to do a field trip to this when this opens up, but there's, we're going to get our first Lego store in the Pittsburgh area. You guys, Yes. I know, I know where, several, where are we going? what's that? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we, where going? Go where are we going? We going? Well, now. according to this, I'll take a look real quick. Uh, but, uh, actually it doesn't say it says a uh, store is aiming for a late summer or early fall opening. So really, it's close, late summer. It's close to late summer. I've never been to a Lego store. Have either of you? No, it sounds I've, amazing. I've I've, <laughs> se I've seen pictures. In fact, we get like a pamphlet from them, and they show pictures of different stores. But I've never actually physically been to one. Uh, the stores in general, according to the Lego website, um, and according to uh, also KDKA here on the web, uh, offer uh, pick and build walls where customers can fill up a cup with whatever bricks and Lego elements they want and digital box kiosks that can show you a 3D model of what Lego sets look like when completed. What your Lego set would be completed? Or what, what, a, what, what a, I don't know. What it should look like. I think like. Like, it's generally what they look like, right? Huh. That so, so it's a little bit of build a bear workshop for Lego slash. I mean, this feels like this feels like a, a corner in, in the old FAO Schwartz I would would have seen, but so, on a much larger scale, right? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't know stuff in FAO Schwartz. Like there was like entire sections sometimes, like the uh, the the Muppet the puppet builder section was like an entire. Like an entire department, it seemed when they had that kind of stuff. So, like, it could be its own store in a mall. Like, like this will probably be in Ross Park Mall. So, I think, it is, mm -hmm. and I believe it is Ross Park Mall that they have this uh, lined up for as well. So, uh, I'm wondering how many of these types of places we're going to see pop up that are either specialty or serve multiple types of toy products. Because I think with the end of Toys R Us, there's going to be a lack of ability to run out and grab right. a number of specific toys. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that, that is kind of the death of something like that, right? You have what's mm -hmm. at Walmart and Target, but that's all kind of uh, lower end in the in the long run. You just don't have that mass, right? You don't have the mass. This The, the selection, like if you think about like the Star Wars toy section was an entire large aisle plus, mm -hmm. um, and now you're you're – in the shortened down aisle and you have a quarter of that aisle dedicated to it. Um, I, I'm just wondering, I hope that we'll see this kind of stuff pop up all over the place. Yeah, well, it seems like a good opportunity, doesn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Alex, Alex Carr is out there in Long Beach, California, says he's been inside a Lego store a couple times for scal scavenger hunts, actually. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and he can confirm that uh, what I'm reading is true about it, I guess. <laughs> Um, also, Steve of Pittsburgh Bold Sports. Go check it out. It's a fun sports podcast we have here on the Sorgatron Media Network. 
His awesome thing of the week, if you have Amazon Prime, there are special deals at Whole Foods. And I, did we talk about this last week? I think we touched on it briefly. Yeah. So, so I mean, and I've been seeing more and more about this. I did download the app, but I have not ventured to a Whole Foods. Whole Foods? Yes. Um, because, I, I don't know, I just haven't felt fancy enough. Uh, but anyways, now that I got my hair cut, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll feel fancy now. And I can go to a Whole Foods and feel like I can That's go to true. a Whole Foods and not be a weirdo. So, Honestly, if you had your long hair, you would fit right into sort of. That's true. That's true. And also not bathe for a week. Uh, anyways, um, whoa, the, whoa. what hippies? Hey, um, but anyways, uh, wow. there's that too. No, it'll be interesting. So maybe it'll be a little less scary to go to a Whole Foods for me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just recoil from it, I guess. Um, and we got one more submitted story I wanted to touch on. Speaking of Amazon, um, this is according to, I believe this is a local affiliate out there in Kansas City. Amazon wants you to start a business to deliver its packages. Um, according to this, uh, if you have $10,000 and want to be your own boss, Amazon has a deal for you, uh, according to KMBC News ABC9 out there. Uh, starting, so, starting Thursday, according to this, you can apply to start your very own small business delivering Amazon Prime packages in Amazon branded vans and uniforms. So it's the Amazon Flex stuff, but you bankroll and start it as your own business independently? I just can't imagine this not being a customer service nightmare. So, so when they're saying branded uniform... Do they give you like a sticker for the side Chilla, of your car Chilla. or are they giving you a whole van? Chilla, you're buying yeah. an Amazon delivery franchise. And and, and for your, like, are you buying a, sh- like, are you buying the shirt? I think you you're buying the rights to be an Amazon Prime delivery person in an so area. They give you like the attire to wear. I'd imagine. I'm sure there's a there's the Amazon company store where which is Amazon.com uh, where you get that <laughs> and it comes with your ten thousand. I would hope it comes with the ten thousand um, dollars. But yeah, uh, business owners will be able to make as much as three hundred thousand dollars a year in profit according to this article, running a full size fleet of forty vans and managing a hundred employees. This is a this is a McDonald's situation. This is a you're you're instead of Amazon. Rolling out and managing, you know, the local deliverers like they do here in Pittsburgh, they're just going to outsource it and franchise, and then it's one less thing that they have to worry about, but they still grow. What? How do how do you get paid? Do you get paid on the number of packages you deliver? Oh, so my so many questions, so many questions. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a delivery services partner service partners uh, 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 situation. I, I know there's a lot in this. There's actually a lot of information in this article about it too. Um, but uh, I mean, I mean, they have an app system for it. I mean, it, it, they just need somebody to kind of manage that quality a little bit, don't they? Mm-hmm. So, and that's where you, as an owner who's invested in this, can do that. So, man, only t- only ten thousand dollars like that is a easy small business loan, probably. Um, to get in on this. So there's an option there. Thank you, Brandon. And by the way, shout out to Brandon. He is actually out in Seattle for the Special Olympic Games. I know I've been seeing pictures from it for a while. Uh, we were doing a, a push for him to help with raising money for that trip uh, over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And it uh, looks like he's having a lot of fun up there seeing the pictures on his Facebook. So uh, shout out to him. He's a, a long time uh, we see him every week in the chat room on this and other shows on the network. And I just want to give a quick shout to him uh, for that stuff, too. So and uh, speaking of people in other places, the country, we already mentioned him once because he's hanging in the chat room telling us about Lego stores. But our good friend Alexander Carr is out there in Long Beach, California. Yeah, he's all the way out there. But that doesn't mean that we don't work with him here in Pittsburgh. That's one thing. What a great thing about technology and the Internet. You don't you can be anywhere. Uh, but uh, Alex is, as my copy says on this old school piece of paper, putting together a puzzle of design and media from uh, branding to print to digital products. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. You you can check out alexandercars.com and alexcars.media to get started. That's K-A-H-R-S, alexcars.media. Go check them out. Thank you to Alex for supporting the awesome cast here all right Riz. yes 
I want to talk about the game jam. I was working this. You uh, were this event last Friday. Uh, this is uh, put on by our friends at Work Hard Pittsburgh. Uh, in conjunction with Looking for Group and Shell Games were a part of it and Academy Pittsburgh and John Lang is going to be joining us on the show next week, actually. Uh, but uh, I, I missed the first week because uh, some of the travels I had to do, but uh, I got to be there for the final uh, presentations and the final uh, awards uh, for it. Um, but I want the person that maybe hasn't been to one of these before because I know yeah. I, I, I helped with the stream last year's event. Mm-hmm. Um, Riz... Tell me about the Game Jam. Uh, the Game Jam is the, like you were saying, is the competition they have. Uh, it's They start on, I believe, Sunday and work all the way up to the Saturday. Uh, and they have to create a video game from scratch from for the week. Um, a video game or, as we, as we saw, a board game for the week. Uh, and they have to have a a specific theme to that to that game and it was complementary colors which was a fascinating uh way of showing it was, it was fascinating to see their interpretations of that role um and i did get i played a few video games as you, as you probably saw sorg and as you mm-hmm. probably uh you you were witness and and a uh, participant in my video gameness um, we played a little bit of Pong, uh, and there were there was fighting games, shooting games, a very really good strategy game that we we both enjoyed um, a little too much, I think. Uh, <laughs> and there was a connect and, and for the board games. There was a Connect Four game, which like a Connect Four style game, which was really really good. Like right. I, I I never thought I'd say that, but. It, it it took Connect Four and it turned it into something very interesting. Right, because it was on, it was on a light board and you had these colored tiles as shown here on the video for you guys on the stream, and you could put the colored title tiles on top of each other to change the colors, and you just needed to get a pattern that was on the card. And if it was something yeah, that was it, not it, just the it, primaries, it could it could be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's it's not like you both get the same card either. Mm-hmm. You have and you, you and the person next to you does not know what your color what your color combination is that was a really interesting aspect to that area uh and i believe that one third second place in the board game uh competition um there was a really cool fighting game sorg and i spent hours playing um, almost hours <laughs> i'd say hours i was minutes 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 playing uh it was a back and forth type dodgeball game kind of sort of uh, where we hit balls back and forth to each other, collecting point, uh, collecting the ball, the color balls, mm-hmm. each time we hit it until it, we go into a blackout. Which the player that doesn't have the correct the, the color combination doesn't have a weapon anymore, mm-hmm. and is uh, has to dodge all these balls without hitting it back. That was very interesting. Uh, the other fighting game was was really interesting as well. Uh, and I, I, like all these games that I've played, and here I, I, for the, those interested I, on the video, this is the this is the color ball game um, yes. that we we're just talking about. It, it was fun because it was you know three different color balls. You hit them, and once you hit them consecutively, it just goes nuts, and and it takes your weapon away. And and, and you know, and you try to hit the other person with the ball, and it's a side scroller kind of situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks like something you pick up on like Xbox Arcade. You know, it was for, on the Xbox. It, it, no, we did play it on the Xbox. Did we? Did we? I thought it was uh, through a PC. Everybody's using was Xbox controllers. PC? No, no, uh, they, had a, they had a laptop yeah. hidden behind. Everybody was on that's laptops. True. Nobody had a console because they were they were walking up, and we were setting them up for the the stream when we were doing the discussions about the games. That's so, true. You, you but but ever, but Xbox controllers. Um, uh, some of them had PlayStation controllers even too that that mm-hmm. I believe work on PC. So, but the fact is, I love that so much. Mm-hmm. Seeing how much work can be put into one week of that. Like one week of 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 that de- development like that creates uh the, the I forget what the name was for that game. Mm-hmm. Uh it creates the the shooter game that we that was on, on that one. Uh I believe it was like Fizz Bomber, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh that one uh which was an amazing which was a pretty really good game to have in a week mm-hmm. ready for you 
so a couple questions because I'm not sure. familiar, and it sounds kind of like one of your typical hackathons. But yeah, you have you have a week, and mm -hmm. so how do they? Because I'm always interested in this. Um, how do they kind of do the start to f and make sure that people didn't come up come in with pre built? Ooh. Well, I missed the stuff. intro stuff, so I'm not entirely sure about that. Like, I don't know how they vet that idea, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people, you know, some of these guys are are, are avid, you know. Uh, amateur developers of some sort. Some people are out of Academy Pittsburgh. So maybe there are, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of, I know how to make this kind of game, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And let's make this kind of game, but with this Twitch, Twitch twist. Yeah. Yeah, um, twist. So I think there's a little bit of that. This is they, These are actually questions we should ask John Lang when he's on next week yeah. uh, a little more in depth and we can get a little bit of insight uh, and, for exactly how it goes and how they organize that. And, and we, saw, we saw how many people actually put time into the game. Mm-hmm. And as well as saw people who just did a like like an RPG quest or mm -hmm. something just easy. And just yeah, the put, one game looked like they, it was just made an RPG maker, didn't it? That's pretty much it. Yeah, and it, like I still didn't know what the like I didn't, I didn't know what the theme was for that one. I was like mm -hmm. looking at it. And I was like, there's nothing like very interesting to play that, and that didn't really draw me to that game. Mm -hmm. Like I was more interested in the pinball game. The com com the, the uh, competitive pinball game that was there that was on on display there, which is well. super simple. It was just it was just three pinball boards next to each other, and you played it competitively against each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, and the um, the one fighting game that we had problems with was the uh, the one punch and. That was it. We we were we were analyzing we were it. Fun. I mean, I want to be clear. We were we we didn't have a problem with it. We were just kind of analyzing it. Like, man, if they yeah. did this, it'd be so much better because yeah. you, we like, could see the potential in it. Can can you give that feedback? Um, yeah, because yeah. the developers yeah. there, so chatting with them was definitely an option if you wanted to, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, it, 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 you never know. Like, these could be things that show up. And actually, the winner, uh, Fizz Bomber, and maybe they may even have some of the runners up there as well because some of those games were really solid. Um, they're going to be at Replay FX uh, as yes. part of the Looking for Group um, uh, booth. Uh, and they've done this the last couple of years too. So you can go uh, check those games out. Maybe they'll be a little more developed since I'll have a little more time since and everything, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, uh, so that's. I guess Fizz, the Fizz Bomber game that was there. It had a logo. It had a look. It had, they had like, they had stuff ready for the hotness that was coming out. Like, they had fans that you can like use mm -hmm. with the guy's face on it. Yeah, they had, they had all marketing. They had, they had everything going for them, and I think one thing, one qual, one one the qualification for winning was that you could do a tournament with the game that you make mm -hmm. in an environment oh, okay. like a replay FX, right? So, so there's that idea too, and also the idea of doing a tournament with a game nobody's played before is kind of fun, right. uh, mm -hmm. unless you were at this game jam and everything like that. And I'm gonna pull up video real quick of the of the kind of one hit boxing game that we were talking about uh, over on the feed. If you want to check it out, and again, it's just kind of a circle. It's 3D. It looks like you know something simple they could have done in like a Unity engine or something like that. But it was you know you go around. Uh, what was the uh, Gang Beast? Uh, Riz, it was it? Gang Beast, yeah, yeah, it's kind of very familiar to that, and it's really like you go around, you're throwing dumbbells up. There's a jump button. We're trying to figure out why you would use a jump button for anything because on it. I think so. I think there was going to be levels in the, like there's going to be levels in that game, mm -hmm. and there's going to be like platforms to jump on. It's definitely. Because I don't think it's just yeah. going to be like a sumo wrestling ring that's that you have to push people out of with eggs as fans. Yeah, it's like, definitely yeah. it's definitely something that you know. Man, I want to see 2.0 of this thing when they've had a little mm -hmm. bit of time to to work out the bugs and and maybe like add saw, some we, features. We saw all these alphas. Yeah, basically. Like, and it, there's still more to get grow on that, and I can see that being a very much gang beast type game where it's playable with four people. It's a good party game. It's a good tournament game, and it's a just a good experience to play. Uh, maybe have more than one hit. Uh, I don't know, but but other than that, the, the game itself looked fresh. It looked clean. It looked. It didn't. It wasn't chunky. It wasn't clunky. It wasn't anything like that. It was good, clean game, and that's what. That was, that's why it was pretty good. Like there there were other games out there that were okay, mm -hmm. but the three that were picked, the three that that won. Uh, third, second, and first place, they were all complete games and mm -hmm. completely ready for the next step. Enough for a smaller game, at least. 
Yeah. An, an, an indie game. Yeah. Awesome. It, a, a small very, very game. Cool. So if you I, want, I'm really looking. Ex- I'm really excited. They're going to have some of these at replay effects. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Are they going to have like just that one game, or are they going to have? Mo- I don't know. The, the, I I feel like they could very well have the other games available as well. But yeah, uh, I can I, I, I can see us playing that tournament like, right. tournament mode in that. I know that, uh, first place does, mm-hmm. um, but I wasn't sure. Again, I didn't see the intro thing to see where all the places were and everything too. So, if you want to see the videos that we're talking about, uh, that that I helped behind the scenes with, uh, go over to Work Hard Pittsburgh's Facebook page. Uh, there's several videos of, of basically um, uh, Matt over there um, having uh, conversations with each of the developers uh, with the board games. Uh, there are about 12 developers between the board and the video games. Uh, so a really cool spread uh, of all of them. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you're into this kind of thing and into the behind the scenes of video games as well. Hey, one more new awesome thing of the week. It's Amanda Narcissi's birthday. So please hey. pl- so please give her uh, the gift of going to Bold Pittsburgh uh, over there, boldpgh.com and uh, liking them, sharing them and whatnot for her birthday. Uh, so I want to throw that out there real quick. Steve's uh, uh, making sure we're aware in the chat room. But uh, let's, uh, let's touch base on a couple other things going on here in the tech world. Uh, I think, you know, hey, all this video game stuff kind of makes you hungry. Um, I was excited to see a, a hamburger robot. <laughs> this seems a little high end for getting some hamburgers done. But over at uh, TechCrunch, um, create start a robot startup creator is opening its first restaurant here with the robot uh, that's going to be making uh, that's going to be making sandwiches for people in the uh, I you know this has is, oh hey it's in San Francisco on Folsom Street because where <laughs> else would this happen? <laughs> but uh, you know it goes through it cuts the bun. They were talking about in this video about how it perfectly places the meat like in the middle of the bun for optimal eating bun eat placement and everything i'm getting hungry looking at this again oh geez uh but uh a lot to it it looks like just the giant rube goldberg machine of hamburger goodness and uh it was kind of it was kind of fun to watch there's a radio commercial i believe it's either on sirius or on like the main like the pittsburgh radio scene uh they have this commercial where they have robots making yogurt as well and they, they actually make sure that you know that these robots are making yogurt and i'm looking at it i'm like that's that's that, that's, that's pretty cool like i, 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 I want to taste robot yogurt i want to taste robot burgers i want to taste these things the the, the interesting thing just for me on me. this is that one of the big things that people they they say why McDonald's did so well was its consistency. Mm-hmm. It was the con- it, it wasn't always the best product, but you knew exactly what you were getting. Yeah. So it's interesting almost making this like a factory, they can create the consistent correct burger every time, which I think is what's going to which was what would make this work. Now if you've watched this season of X-Files, just remember to tip your ro- your robot burger <laughs> chef because otherwise Jeez. Your house is going to blow up. Jeez. <laughs> um, well, you, on top of that, I'm looking at this and looking through some of this. Like, you know, I was about to comment on on the pillars of ingredients, like tomatoes and stuff. But if you look inside them, it's actually a full tomato they've stuffed in there, and they're slicing them individual slices from fresh tomatoes and pickles and onions as it's going down the conveyor belt. It doesn't get much fresher than that, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, looking. For the, so, if you wanted to go check that out, like I said, it is um, uh, Folsom Street in uh, in. Uh, oh, actually, I want to send this to Missy because uh, she's in the greater California area right now. Please go visit this. <laughs> so maybe we can get some research uh, back on that over there. So, um, Chilla. What's going on in your world? What's going on in my world? Let me see what I want to cover. You got some stories here. <clears throat> so, so one of the one of the things, and so I'm going to do one good one, one bad one. Oh. Um, so this is going in the wrong direction. So one of the things that I was surprised to see, and there's been a couple announcements over the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, both Directv Now 
So if you're a cord cutter, this is definitely a big deal, or you're thinking about cord cutting, this this might cause concern. Um, both DirecTV Now and PlayStation View have announced increases in their services, typically by about $5. So if you were paying $35, you are not going to be paying $40. If you were paying $50, you are not going to be paying $55, etc. Um, so expect about a $5 price hike. The one thing I'm interested in is I got in in the original first month launch for the um, DirecTV Now, which they claimed to promise me that because of the timing I got in, I got the $60 Go Big package for 35 bucks. Mm-hmm. So I'm in, and they promised me that that price would never ever go up. Now this says they're increasing the price of all packages for all customers, current and future. Now I wonder, will are they honor the thirty-five dollar price lock? If they don't, you better yeah. raise some hell. If they don't, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's but basically I, it. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, <clears throat> I don't need the service that bad. Nope. Um, nope. If they don't, I'm out. But yeah, so I'm I'm on the I'm one of the I guess early adopters yada yada yada. I got it uh, I think between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So uh, are you telling me these cable like packages that we cord cutted with are now <laughs> just like the cable companies? I mean, uh, well, you knew this was coming. Well, it, but see, this is the problem though. If if I I don't think people knew this was coming because the whole point of this was to get out of. The rigmarole but, of the cable companies. But the cable companies made the new packages. So, of course, they're going to apply the old uh, the old rules, right? And plus, of course, all those same programs that you're putting on cable packages are going to raise their rates, ESPN or Univision or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, right? Mm-hmm. So, of course, you're going to come into the same problems of this. But if, if we anyone was, has a leg up on this and being able to control that cost, it's AT and T as they've acquired Directv and they're now acquiring Time Warner. Right, you'd think, right? Yeah. Who, I, who I believe completely, who promised that they were not going to raise rates and actually make them cheaper, and just announce raising rates. Yeah. So. Of course. So, yeah. Sling, I guess yeah. in addition to that, Sling TV also announced a price bump. So. Hmm. Not mm-hmm. not such a and, wise move. And on their in the side. midst of losing Univision channels, which includes El Raid Network, which a lot of our wrestling fans are very upset about because Lucha Underground just came back. So yeah. Anyways, what you gotta give us some did good you, stuff. Give us some good did, stuff, Chilla. Did, did you get? Did you do Google's res, so Google's reservation? Did you did you get a call? But no, no, I okay. No, no, I, no. I, I just saw that I know, it was I, launching. I, I've I've seen I've seen a bunch of people getting phone calls from. Oh really? Google AI, yeah. No, I just saw this um, article that it was going to be uh, it was going to start beginning in the coming weeks. Yes. So and this there's, is the there's thing. Been a couple. I've seen a couple articles online of like hair salons and food order type places that are that are getting those. there it goes well i wonder if i'm going to get one of these as a business that's why i'm one that's why i thought maybe maybe you were going to dovetail into that yeah like somebody's like hey one. do you have hours and da, 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 you know um i don't know I'm, I'm i don't know what i'm really labeled as that it would be something they would call for um or maybe i'd be second level or something like that maybe I, maybe I should start answering my phone maybe maybe that's why i got like four different calls from an odd number today Nah, that's probably just oh, spam. That's, that's probably just <laughs> something I forgot to pay. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so the one I did want to cover is there's a company called Libra Computer. Okay. It's making a a Raspberry Pi competitor board mm-hmm. called the Renegade Elite. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. That sounds like a Rambo movie. <laughs> the interesting thing about this is it's going to be able to fully support 4K at a high frame rate because it has uh, – where's the specs? It has ridiculous specs. Um, it has 4 gig of RAM. It's also $100. It, it, it is also – yeah, you're going from a $35 device to a $100 device. But it also runs – it can also run Android Oreo, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. So you could kind of have a Chromebook type – experience or a chrome pc but running android where and i think this is why 
Chrome devices are, are getting all the Android apps because they know they know these types of devices are, are coming or out there because they have a low end one, but that has um, the 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 device handles the GPU has four gig of RAM. The device has a gig of RAM itself, um, micro SD slot. It actually has USB C, HDMI, Ethernet. Looks like two USB Cs and three USB ports. Um, thought it was an interesting device. Like you said, it is. It, it does come in above. Um, but think about playing um, Fortnite when it comes out for Android on this thing, right on your on your TV. Um, <laughs> because of course, yes. So, so I thought it was cool. I I didn't realize there were other boards that were higher end than the Raspberry Pi out there made by um, Asus, Rock sixty four, Lay Potato. No, of course they're um, they're trying to get <clears> into this market, right? Yeah. But I think it's a it's a cool concept. I'm glad there's there again. You know, I'm big on competition. I'm glad there's continuing to be competition in the space. Um, and if you're looking at building kind of like a an emulator type device, I think this device could be perfect, especially for higher end emulation. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to roll back for a second because Dave Podner actually said something about if you just get unlimited AT and T Mobile and it's free for your television. Have you looked at this? So so I don't want to move. Because one, I think it's going to be more expensive, and then I'll, I won't get my free HBO. I don't think because I already I just figured out how to get my free HBO with my with my AT and T account. But have you looked at the uh, the mobile? Because uh, um, oh, it's insane wanna... that we have multiple unlimited plans. Yeah, I don't want to go to. Uh, so unlimited will definitely cost me more, and with mm. I, I know you're Mister. I run the I I run my own little AT and T cellular network. Over there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> In Beach View, Chilla, but... <laughs> Chilla, you know what I did? You know what I did? We had to send the iPad. Uh, uh, we're going to try to get a fix, so we sent it with Missy out to California and with our family member that knows how to fix iPhone things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to get that hotspot that we were talking about in the in the Slack. You know, there's like you can get a home Wi-Fi hotspot from AT and T to basically have home internet, right? Mm-hmm. Then I thought about it. I was like. I have the, like two iPhone 5s sitting around here that I can just plug in at home, turn on on my turn back on unsuspend on my AT and T plan, and now I have internet at home without having to pay another two hundred dollars for another device. Yep, yep. As long as as long as that I'm get their device, I'm sure has Ethernet out and a number of other things that you could yeah, do. Yeah, I would hope, but yeah. really I think about it. It's like I don't. It runs my security cam and my Apple TV and my Xbox 360. And that's all I need. You know what would be interesting is if you could go find a cheap one of those Wi-Fi repeaters, mm-hmm. like Netgear makes them. Talk to Kraus. He may actually have one that I gave him that he's no longer using. Um, you could take one of those devices, put it in extended mode so it extends the Wi-Fi off your phone, but then gives you an Ethernet port that you could then bump out to another another uh router and like saturate your house in, in total wi-fi and wired ethernet there you go so have you looked at the plans this at&t crap plan that they want you to do for live programming that <laughs> you're really that, selling that it i'm not me giving that that i'm not giving up crap plan? so so <laughs> you get it yeah, i think you can pay like 15 dollars a month to get this thing and it's all it's only live streaming that's my first problem right you know where where's the thing where i can Watch TV, unlimited. Um, it has all Turner stuff. So it's your A&E, it's your um, you know, history channels, uh, it, it's your TNTs, TBS, Discovery, Hallmark Channel. Like, Do you get your locals? I don't think you get locals at all. But then they're like throwing in, and then depending on what plan you can get, you can add on Pandora Pro- Premium and Amazon Music and... Uh, 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 Showtime and Cinemax and things like that. So you get to pick one <laughs> as you go. That. I can do that with my Amazon account. I can yeah, do, yeah. I mean, it's there's just so like... many different ways to do this. I, I don't know. I, I w- the things that I'm interested in having, having on there are my local channels, my Root Sports, mm-hmm. um, well, which is now what, AT&T sports net or whatever yeah um yeah i'm sure, that, I'm sure that'll that, be included too at some but, point but it's included in my 35 dollar plan yeah it's, it's which crazy. is really the 60 dollar plan it's crazy great if you're an at&t $5. customer i suppose but man this is this is well, well but um kraus is a, a verizon customer and he mm-hmm. he went with the direct tv now stuff yeah yeah so 
I don't know. Well, on that note, hold on. I got something else I got to say here. Oh, we just left the room. I was going to say his ad while he's here. Uh, I want to say uh, a shout out to our good friends at Dark Forge Studios, deep in the bowels below Sorgatron Media Studios, actually. Uh, but uh, Alex, uh, not Alex, Aaron is uh, doing some cool stuff down there. Uh, if you can imagine it, Dark Forge Studios, our Dark Forge design on the Twitter can bring it to life. Whether it's custom props, escape rooms, hired attractions, or custom set design, uh, Aaron has done it all and then some. For more information, go visit darkforgestudios.co. And he's making some cool stuff down there. He's making cool stuff right now, uh, as we speak. Me? Is he still in? The, oh, is he still in the studio? Or you uh, say he, he's out? in the building. He's in the building. We can ask I him wanna, here afterwards. What are you looking I, for? I, I want to quote on an Iron Man suit. You want to quote on an Iron Man suit? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It won't probably won't be made of iron. Let's put that out there. No, no, no. But like, there's there's a, a, a lot of people that do them out of fiberglass or foam. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. Um, I just don't have the time. And I, <laughs> so you're going to contract our friends at Dark Forge Studios so, so I could to make an Iron Man su- uh, suit for you so you can p- complete your life goal in look and style of Tony Stark. Yes. I mean, we can. We have a Patreon for that. We do have we? a Patreon for that as well, but we do have a sponsor that may be able to ship in for that. So, oh, wait, he's there. Hey, Aaron, can you make an Iron Man suit for Chilla? Is, what's that? How much money do you have? Well, like the, the, the like the going rate is like probably between a thousand and fifteen hundred bucks. So the going rate is about a thousand and fifteen hundred bucks to fifteen hundred to to buy one, I think. To buy one, like a custom suit. Like a custom suit. No, <laughs> it's not within no. the realm. Not within the realm. Okay. <laughs> this is not looking good for your ad right now. <laughs> What's that? Not for fifteen hundred. I think it'll be more chilly because it's going to be tailor made to you. Right. right, but that's the ones so. the ones that I'm talking about. Right. You have to send your measurements and stuff in. Oh, yeah. really? You have to send measurements in for those. You know what? Yeah. We'll we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll see okay. what we can do here. <laughs> I'm not I don't expect it to fly. Oh yeah, you, it, oh, <laughs> it doesn't have to fly. <laughs> but it has to shoot things. It doesn't have to fly, but it, it has to shoot things. It's going to take a big chunk out of Big Bank Esquire. It's a big It's going to take a big chunk out of Big <laughs> Bank Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Negotiations yeah, if studio, pending. If he's in studio next time, yeah, I'd definitely be interested in talking to him. <laughs> he's having a good chill. having a real conversation with you in studio next time. You guys run into each other. <laughs> oh, the check he says I'm on board as long as the check clears. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have, I'm holding Mike's money, so it'll be all good. Yeah, yeah, he's holding my money since it got taken. Anyways, <laughs> next week, like I mentioned before, John Lang from Looking for Group. And also going to be representing uh, the Game GM Academy Pittsburgh and uh, over there at Replay FX. Guys, if you saw Looking for Groups booth last year, I think it's going to be bigger. <laughs> what? <laughs> From what I'm hearing. It's, it's not possible. Oh, my God. I, 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 I had a conversation with him. I also had a converse, uh, conversation with Fred over at Replay, Replay FX by chance today. Which is weird since I, I'm completely wearing my Replay <coughs> FX shirt from last year. Um, but it was, it was just everything connected on that today. But uh, it sounds like the count, the console lounge is going to be a lot more fun this year. Uh, I'm hoping I get a chance to hang out there like I did last year. I, I volunteer. I put in my volunteer hours uh, today to hopefully hopefully get some of those as well. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's going to be a blast. Uh, don't, definitely check that out. And we're going to be asking John about what's coming up here uh, for their their part of Replay FX for looking for Group Pittsburgh LFGPGH.com. That'll be next week here on the show. And in a couple of weeks, we will not be live the la- the week of Replay FX because uh, uh, myself and producer Missy will actually be out in Philadelphia. Uh, and, and in true technology fashion, we'll be staying in Chinatown at an Airbnb uh, and going to uh, pa- Podcast Movement for, uh, well, I think it's like four days and uh, mega busing there and back. So, uh, so uh, it'll be an experience. There'll be plenty of uh, video and links for us to talk about after that. But uh, we'll have a pre-recorded episode that will be going out that week to be determined. Chilla, we should probably talk about that. I just yeah, scheduled the one for Mayhem show, so we we definitely need to do something here very, 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 very soon. Sounds good. Uh, I'll actually be getting a device, I think, next Friday. I can probably Ooh. pre-record. Another another vacation device. Chilla, Chilla Tech.net, Chilla on the Twitter. Chill on Twitter, John's chill on the Facebook. Mm-hmm. And of course, the Riz is Riz Plays Games on your Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Riz Plays Games. There you go. Uh-huh. Go check it out. 
doing Check stuff, doing stuff in the doing studio, games, doing stuff all over. Is. That's right. My name is my name. <laughs> pretty much self-explanatory. There you go. There you go. And, of course, please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great shows going on. Give a shout-out to our friends at Thrifty Podcast. I had a fun uh, listening to their latest episode there. Please please support the fun employment episodes. They just celebrated a year anniversary, actually. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. And uh, check out everybody else on the Sorgatron Media Network as well. A lot of fun and geeky stuff. Comic Book Pit's got some pretty big comic book guests coming up, I believe. I don't know if I can say yet. Uh, and of course, they're hanging with all th- those guys from the McSauce podcast, too, which has been a lot of fun to catch those conversations when they've been here in studio recording that. Thank you so much, everybody in the chat room, for joining us. A great crew here tonight uh, uh, on, on the uh, Facebook Live feed uh, from here in Pittsburgh and across the country out, out there in California. Thanks for joining us. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.